South Korea and Japan say the North has conducted a new weapons test firing projectiles eastward. The two countries say North Korea used two short-range ballistic missiles in the latest test. Pyongyang has already carried out two tests of what it called hypersonic missiles in the past week. Following that, the U.S. imposed sanctions on five people linked to North Korea's ballistic weapons program. Sanctions are the first by U.S. President Joe Biden's administration. North Korea says a measure is a provo uh, provocation and the U.S. is intentionally escalating the situation. Pyongyang says its recent missile tests are an exercise of its right to self-defense in the face of potential regional threats. Story. Of course, I'm going to bring in Mr. Jason Andre. He's a political commentator who joins us via Skype out of Niagara Falls in Ontario. Thank you very much, Jason, for giving us your time, your understanding of that situation, and of course, that story. Well, uh, basically what we have is a situation where the United States wants to suppress the DPRK from being able to ex uh, exercise their sovereign rights to uh, trade with whoever it is that they want, to be able to engage in relations with uh, the international community in general. This is what the U.S. wants to stop. Now, the DPRK has always been under threat from the U.S. There have been, you know, numerous... Uh, threats of invasion and military force over the last several decades. So the DPRK in the, its Songon policy have created a, a military first policy of deterrence from invading the country. One of the ways the DPRK has been doing that is through the development of missile technology. Now, all of a sudden, the DPRK has, um, I, I haven't seen 100% proof yet, but if this is exactly what is being reported by government officials and, and thereby the media, that this really is a Mach 10 capable missile, this one advancement outdoes everything else, uh, pardon me, everyone else in the entire world. The next uh, closest in technology is uh, the joint venture between India and Russia, who are set to test uh, a missile that will be Mach 5 to 7, in 2024, this would put the DPRK, a severely a disadvantaged country, at the forefront. Now, this is what the United States does not want to see. It does not want to see a DPRK that is thriving. It does not want to see a DPRK that is capable of defending itself, that is capable of creating a, a tremendous deterrent. Now, if the U.S., uh, pardon me, if the DPRK can get a missile to go Mach 10, that is far beyond anything the U.S. is capable of stopping. Even the best anti-missile technology in the U.S. cannot stop a missile traveling at that speed. And then once it can reach the mainland, then the DPRK has every deterrence that they could ever want. And it would be up to the United States to continue to put more pressure on them. There really was no need for the new sanctions. This is the, the DPRK showing that they're not going to bow to these sanctions. And I think that that is something that they've been doing for um, countless decades now. That no matter how, how many sanctions the United States has put on the country, the DPRK has come out of it and has been willing to go as far as, as necessary in order to survive. So we're probably going to see much more of this in the future. Um, if the DPRK continues to carry out more tests, I assume there will be more sanctions coming on them by the United States. But uh, as it stands right now, I believe the U.S. government is probably standing by to see how exactly the DPRK responds to this. Exactly. And, uh, you know, is it not better, Jason, that at the end, you know, try to address the North Korean sanctions? And, you know, perhaps that country will also be encouraged, you know, not to flex missiles. What do you think about this, uh, this situation, you know, as far as there should be talks and, of course, you know, uh, agreements here and there to basically calm the situation? Do you think this is what everybody really wants there and beyond that region? I think everybody in the region who is within striking distance of any kind of war taking off, South Korea, China, Russia, etc., I'm sure nobody there actually wants a war. The problem is that the United States needs the country destabilized and taken down, which is the reason for the sanctions to begin with. Uh, there could be dialogue to uh, reduce some of the sanctions. Uh, with the DPRK reducing some of its missile or nuclear program, etc. But 
the U.S. has no grounds to place any sanctions on the DPRK to begin with. And now the, the UN frequently does back them up on this because of, uh, with, with regards to nuclear weapons, not necessarily missiles itself, uh, trying to prevent the proliferation of, new, of uh, these kinds of weapons. But if the United States was not sanctioning them to begin with, none of this would be necessary. The DPRK lives under threat from the United States, which is why they develop this technology in general. I'm sure they would rather put resources into other things, but so long as they have, you know, the superpower, imperialist power of the world, breathing down its neck and threatening, threatening them, they really have no other choice but to build a massive means of defense. All right, many, many thanks. That's Mr. Jason Andrew out of Ontario. Many, many thanks for your time.